hello and welcome to another episode of Golden Nuggets with Sylvia Eldawi. Today I'm joined on the couch with Shervin Gasemlu, founder of SG Recruitment Group. We're going to talk about all things recruitment. Uh, we're going to talk about CV do's and don'ts, jump ship, jump shipping, which is a new term in uh, real estate. And yeah, so just tell us about you, um, Shervin, and SG Group. Uh, yeah, so we've we've been in the market uh, since the beginning of the year, so still still pretty new, um, but it's just yeah completely taken off, which is obviously good news. But I've been in the real estate market now out here for about three years. Um, started off as a as a real estate agent myself, um, and then uh, went into recruitment within real estate, and then obviously set up this company to help uh, people that are looking to move to Dubai to do real estate from literally all over the world. So, so it's, it's very rare that someone who's in recruitment has actually gone through the real estate recruitment process themselves. Yep. And, uh, you know, you can relate to your candidates. So yeah, exactly. Did yeah, you so. move to Dubai because of a real estate job or? I did, yeah. So I, I worked um, for, for actually one of the largest companies out here. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up joining them, moved out here for real estate. So. in your first year exactly or, yeah okay. it's, um yeah it was a good sell um didn't didn't quite make the the million million dollar mark but um yeah had a pretty successful uh, sort of year and a half roughly that i was in real estate um moved out here yeah purely to do that it was something i was interested in i, I was doing recruitment back in the uk as well so it was for a natural an agency, progression so, for you yeah the, the skills are very transferable so um what i found was that rather than selling jobs to people i was selling obviously real estate so yeah. the basics of the job were, were very similar Identical, yeah. um but it's more you know moving out to dubai and then living in a city that was thriving throughout obviously mm. the, the troubles of covid and, and things like that yeah. was was a no-brainer uh, for me so yeah ended and up it, moving out it there. is quite a common transition <clears throat> to either go from real estate to recruitment or recruitment to real estate it right? is yeah it is i mean I, I speak to a lot of agents now who are looking to leave the industry to to get into recruitment as well so mm -hmm. yeah like i said obviously the the, the basics of the job uh, of both oh, jobs are very similar mm -hmm. yeah so but um, it's more office based rather than yeah. being out showing property and stuff. yeah yeah it just mm -hmm. depends what what you prefer you know obviously with recruitment um yeah you do obviously get a basic salary and stuff as well so it is a bit more steady for, as a as a career move um, mm -hmm. However, um, I think that the opportunity is much larger in real estate. Yeah. And there's, you know, the same way you've got like a, a buyer's market and a seller's market in real estate. Mm. In recruitment, you have a candidate market and a brokerage market. True. Yeah. So what would you say right now? It's candidates market. I it is. So. Yeah, mm. absolutely. So we obviously we, we speak to many candidates um, on a daily basis. And what we find is that the um, candidates that are more experienced in things like car sales, uh, recruitment, real estate back in the UK or wherever, you know, obviously wherever they're coming from, um, they're the ones that seem to be getting quite a few offers. And then they're the ones that are deciding where they feel most comfortable. And it's something that we always recommend to candidates is to to go with the company you feel most comfortable with because yeah. the the basics of the job are the same no matter where you go and the offers um are and the yeah more or less the same as exactly, well exactly yeah. yeah so the offers will, will be similar packages um it's just which company you feel most comfortable mm -hmm. going into work and, and obviously doing your best mm -hmm. in uh, at sorry every day so yeah. um yeah we we find that right now it's a candidates market for sure there are a lot of new obviously real estate companies uh, okay, forming yeah. so um obviously the market's doing well and, and it's down to the candidate where they feel most comfortable working mm -hmm. So you mentioned a couple of industries that people tend to switch from, mm. like car sales is one of them. Yeah. But there are some less obvious industries, which, especially when I was in the UK, I noticed that this group of people made the best real estate <coughs> agents, mm. and that was <coughs> teachers. Yeah. So if someone had a teaching background, mm. they made a fantastic agent why yeah. because they're able to explain things very well they're very patient people yeah. um are there any other industries that you've noticed work really well and and you know other professions that can transition into real estate and 
do amazingly well yeah so customer service is one so what we find is that um sometimes you know a, a lot of uh, companies that we work with they want specifically salespeople to come in and, and pick up the phone mm-hmm. and obviously be prepared to get rejected x amount of times yeah. per day however um customer service roles you don't really find it as much uh, sort of the rejection and, and it's more about making sure your client is happy with the yeah with the work that you're mm-hmm. doing and, and um the service that you're providing so um on occasion you know where we do speak to a candidate we qualify them mm. uh we we try to sort of find out if they've got like a bubbly personality which mm. we find does very well because uh, that word <clears throat> bubbly yeah i always associate it with um well if someone's called bubbly it means they're funny and fat yeah i mean it's not right? the, uh... <laughs> <laughs> they're funny and fat otherwise yeah. you just call them funny but yeah, yeah, yeah that's I why mean, i used to hate being called bubbly I'd say so someone that's quite outgoing someone that makes you feel warm you know when you when you speak to them and when you deal with them I think it's quite important because if you let's say you you as an agent turn up to a property and you're a bubbly person you know the person is going to feel better out about the property yeah. um, well, about purchasing it that, rather than exactly bubbly, yeah. exactly yeah okay. so um yeah we find that when we do speak to people and, and they have that sort of effect on us as recruiters um, oh, we've got our, got our special guest, The Fly, <laughs> joined us on the yeah, studio today. Um, yeah, we find that they do tend to do well in real estate as well mm. because um, even landlords or sellers are more reluctant to speak to them on the phone mm. um, rather than someone that's going in quite monotone and, and mm. just asking the classic, you know, is your property for sale? Is it yeah. available for rent? You know, um, people that come from a customer service background are mm. very good at building rapport with And that could include clients. like luxury retail or retail? Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've hired a few people from retail um, in mm. the past um people yeah again we and they're we, used to the long hours yeah mm. used to the long hours the hard work um you know quite a corporate um, nature as well mm. so people that we feel you know their personality traits um match the real estate market mm. we'll also send those to our clients as well what about hospitality yeah that? similar mm. yeah similar as well so again you're, you're used to dealing with clients uh on, on the face of it so um i think yeah people that work in hospital hospitality sorry they're used to like you said working long hours as mm. well so similar to retail um we find that they tend to do well in most cases and they're, they're hard workers as well mm. for sure it's a it is a difficult job uh, yeah. hospitality i think the only thing that stops people from jumping from real retail to real estate is maybe mm. having a car but maybe they just i mean it's quite easy to get a license if you're if you don't already have a driving license yeah but getting a car you can just rent one for less than two thousand dirhams a month yeah definitely yeah Yeah. there's there's loads of apps and and websites at the moment and that's something that we help with you know as a recruitment agency we we don't just find recruits we help with you know relocation and Mm. people obviously for them it's a bit daunting changing countries Mm. and moving abroad obviously i've been through it and a lot of my candidates have as well so what we've Mm. done is we've tried to give them the the full th- um service i suppose in, in terms of relocation yeah, yeah exactly and, and helping them with uh car rentals helping them find accommodation we partner up with a lot of companies out here that have uh, stock for short-term rentals for mm-hmm. example so uh, we try and help them throughout the process and just make sure they've got everything they need in order to move just, country and, yeah. and uh, get set up properly and which countries <coughs> are you finding like which nationalities are moving over this year to become real estate a lot agents. from the uk yeah. um so obviously naturally being from the uk it's, it's easier for Dubai's us Dubai's always on our radar yeah Brits, exactly yeah. yeah exactly it's uh in my opinion it is a step up um mm-hmm. and it's a uh, a place where if you're in the right mindset and want to succeed and do well then dubai gives you that platform to to really uh, push yourself to that next yeah. level so the uk is is quite common uh we do get a few from europe um mm. so we we've got a german recruiter at the moment so she she hires um quite a few from germany mm-hmm. um and then just english speaking to be honest mm. we get quite a few from um australia america canada is quite mm. popular recently yeah. uh south africa as well we've placed a few south african candidates as well so if you do speak english then it's a very easy market market 
instead of a brokerage market. Candidates kind of have the um, advantage where they can select who they're working for as opposed to before where <coughs> you get chosen. Yeah. So what would you, you know, now I guess candidates can do the interviewing to some degree. So yeah. what are they looking for? What questions should they be asking their future <coughs> or prospective brokerage? Um, so, I mean, the first advice I would give them is to not speak to that many agencies because the job itself, like I said, is, is, um, it is very similar no matter where you go. Mm. Um, but I think that, I mean, I, I had a candidate myself uh, a year or so ago where I, I placed them at, at the company I was working at, but they had, I think, seven offers on the table mm. from seven different companies that they'd spoken to. And I, I just said to them like that, well, they said to me that the stress of it was more than it was worth speaking yeah. to these companies. And he wanted to do a thorough job of, uh, making sure he's choosing the right company, but, he did a, such a thorough job that it became more of a hindrance than anything mm -hmm. else. So um, what he said to me, and I, I say this to candidates now, is to look uh, to, you know, we'll send you to three or four companies. Mm -hmm. Of those three or four, they will probably offer a similar package where, you know, the standard is 50-50 in terms commission. of commission. Mm -hmm. um, and it will go up to 60-70% roughly, depending on obviously performance-based mm -hmm. bonuses. So um we'll send them to three or four and we'll say of those three or four let us know which ones you're interested in um and then do your research mm -hmm. based on that to see where you think you would be a better fit so we've got some companies for example that concentrate largely on social media you yeah. know if that's the agent you want to be then that's the company for you on the flip side we've got other companies where they'll expect you in the office from nine till six True, it's, yes. you know hit your kpis do your 50 to 100 calls a day um and you know if that suits your way of working mm. then join a company like that so it depends on the candidate and what they're looking for and mm. the advice i'd always give give sorry is to um join a company where you feel comfortable aligned and you with think, their principles exactly so. yeah mm. and, and a company where you feel like in that envir environment you will flourish yeah and um i i've i've got one uh, newly expatted agent that's moved over from the UK. Yeah. He's uh, doing one on one coaching with me. Mm. And he was in exactly the same position. He came and he had three job offers on the table. Yeah. Um, he had yeah. accepted one. Mm -hmm. And when he kind of told the other two, you know, I've, I'm going with this company. Yeah. The managing director of one of those companies yeah. invited him out for lunch on yeah. a Saturday <clears throat> nice. and spent about three hours mm -hmm. with him convincing him why he should join you know look if I'm <clears throat> if I'm giving you if I'm devoting my Saturday lunch yeah to you mm. as an agent <clears throat> instead of spending it with my family mm. how do you think I'm gonna yeah. look after you when you're and he ended up taking the um the he offer, ended up offer. switching at the last minute and accepted the offer and then later on he found out that that day was actually his uh, the the managing director's <coughs> birthday. Oh, okay. So not only did he give up a Saturday, yeah. but he gave up his birthday lunch yeah. to try and convince this. So it just goes to show you, like the the quality. There's not great quality coming in, but when it does come in, you've got to pull out the stops. There's no good mm. seeing the you know going through a three step process of you know recruit uh, telephone interview recruitment. <coughs> Uh, HR manager and then the sales manager and then yeah, the yeah. CEO like mm. there's too many <clears throat> hoops to jump agreed so are you advising your clients to reduce the recruitment process period or what are yeah, you telling yeah yeah absolutely so I, I had a client recently where they had a three or four stage process and in my opinion it's just it's unnecessary because mm. first things it will put it will put off the candidate you know a candidate um, although you're obviously doing a thorough job, I think time is also of the essence. And mm. if they've been offered by two or three different people, um, you know, it's unlikely that they'll wait and do a, a three or four stage process if their their heart's already with someone else. Mm. So I think a two stage process, in my is opinion, enough. is the best because we do the first stage for you, right? Mm. We do the telephone interview sure. and we qualify the candidates. And until now I've, I've not literally had one complaint of candidates that we've sent across that mm. we've spoken to, we've qualified and feel that they're a, um, a, a right fit for the company. So we'll do the hard work for you. We'll get you a candidate that we feel will be a good fit for the team. 
they're qualified, they either have the personality to do well or the experience to do well. Um, so then from there, we'll get you to uh, interview them on Zoom in most cases and flies back. Um, <laughs> and we'll, we need we'll, some piff paff in here. <laughs> um, we'll get, yeah, we'll get you to do the first stage interview with them on a Zoom call. And then it, it after thinks the that, set is a sunflower. <clears throat> yeah. That's why, because of all the yellow. <laughs> Um, and then after the first stage interview, we'll get you to meet with the owners in, in most cases as well. We're, we're finding that a lot of CEOs, owners are, are actually doing the final stage interview mm -hmm. because it shows that they care about the quality of candidate coming yeah. through. Um, but also they they want to make sure that um, the, the agent, I guess, or the proposed agent is happy with the package being offered and, mm -hmm. and things like that as well. And it just shows from the candidate side that um, the company and, and what to expect um, uh, as well. Yeah. So you s probably see about a thousand CVs a day. Yeah. <laughs> what are your kind of do's and don'ts? Like what would make you immediately dismiss a CV and what would make you stop and think and look and can strongly consider? Yeah. Yeah. So and it's those that those that are laid out properly stand out the most. So we get a lot of generic CVs. We get some horrific CVs as well. I'll be honest what, what with makes you. Like, horrific? Oh, like there'll literally be a few lines. Like there's no, um, no detail. There's literally, you know, from not 2019 to 2020, I worked mm. here. Uh, from there, this date to that date, I worked here, and it's mm. just nothing no, else. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's just. Uh, really, I, I don't side, know. <clears throat> you could get like one that's four pages long. Yeah, which again, I think is too, much. too much. You know, keep what's your it, maximum? Maximum two pages. two pages. Yeah, there's no need for any more. Um, yeah, just I think the format helps a lot. So if mm. it's easy to follow um bullet points i i prefer to like a long paragraph about what you've done you know mm -hmm. i'm as a recruiter i probably won't read through half a page paragraph about your 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 you know what you've done in your previous job mm -hmm. um keep so you're, you're bold, looking for relevance maybe. really yeah, yeah yeah relevance as well so um i will skim through most cvs anyway but having a picture you know that straight away stands out to me because it brightens mm. up the page right I, I black so and that, white. Uh, that depends <clears throat> where you are because yeah. in the uk you would not have because it it does lead to the impression that you're going to make a decision based on my appearance which let's be honest <clears throat> decisions are made based on your first impressions and appearance True. but candidates don't want to be <clears throat> discounted or mm. shortlisted mm. based on their appearance but they should that's my mm -hmm. opinion you know mm -hmm. get get your picture on there there's mm -hmm. if, if you're well presented for example mm -hmm. then why not use that to your advantage yeah. um and I, I think that yeah i mean we'll, we won't get into the uk too much but i think they're they're very overly politically correct mm -hmm. at times and i think um like i said you know in, in dubai it's a lot more uh, straightforward let us see obviously what you look like and, and you can tell a lot I mean, from the I picture used as well to, even you know? when there isn't a picture when i yeah. was hiring <clears throat> mm. i'd st i'd google people yeah. so you've also got yeah. to check what your online footprint yeah true. what what digital footprint you've left behind because yeah, yeah. uh don't assume that just because you've sent your cv you might put a link to your linkedin which is nice and professional you might yeah. put a nice professional picture do not use a passport photo for your yeah. cv <clears throat> but be aware that people are going to be looking for for you elsewhere. Yeah. So if your Instagram is open and you're showing that you're a party person, yeah, yeah. you know, you're not, you know, there's no professionalism in your profile. Mm. Judgments <clears throat> could be made off of that too, or your TikTok, or if you look like you're spending too much time on social media, that might also be off-putting. Yeah, true. No, that's, that's definitely true as well. Um, which again goes back to the point, you know, why not put a, a nice professional picture if someone's going to do their research on your mm. social media and your, um, your, your, um, you know, footprint online, mm. then why not put a nice professional picture? Cause that's mm. the first impression that they'll see in yeah. the first picture they'll see of you. So mm. yeah, I think pictures are important. I think formatting is as well. So yeah. just make it, make it as easy to follow as possible. Colors, no um, colors. 
neutral colors maybe mm. like like a nice i've seen some cvs with a bit of like navy blue in there for mm. example which again helps your cv stand out but just bear in mind you know what would you want to see if you were a recruiter mm. looking at a thousand plus cvs a day mm. what would make it stand out for you um and just have that in the back of your mind so um just make it as easy to follow as possible mm. put in the relevant points um format it well and, and neatly um, and have a picture in there as well. Okay. I think is uh, the main point. And so that's all well and good for real estate agents. What about ops, operations, mm -hmm. uh, administrative, property managers? What's your advice for them? Similar, similar advice? Similar thing as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. just again, I think relevance is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that your CV is as relevant as possible to the job that you're applying for. Mm -hmm. um, and showcase in the bullet points, showcase the skills that you think would match the requirements for mm -hmm. the role. I'd give one other advice, which I always used to pick up on. And I don't know if that's because my attention to details <clears throat> just. If you're saving your CV as a PDF, mm. don't save it as, uh, you Untitled. know, SECV 2023, yeah, yeah. you know, because then it gives me the impression that, oh, She's got a 2022 version, a 2021 version, yeah. um, or don't save it as like copy of, you yeah. know, so make it your full name. I'd make it your full name dot PDF, right? Yeah. Again, it makes it easier mm. for the person uh, looking at your CV to, mm -hmm. to know who you are and, and yeah, a lot mm. about you. So yeah, attention to detail is very important as well. Mm. And it shows the employer, uh, showcases a little bit of your skill mm. and what what to expect if they were to take you on as a mm. as one of their candidates and um i did a post on my <coughs> socials recently about the one word you should never include on your cv do you know what that is one word you, yeah i, I should I, am i allowed to say it <laughs> <laughs> i'll say it yeah go on so uh come c-u-m yep so people are saying on their CV and it's definitely from you know, certain nationalities use this very normally, but they should know, you know your audience. So like receptionist yeah. come administrator, yeah. um, you know, I don't know, real estate agent come property manager. D yeah. d d d d just don't do it. Don't put it. Yeah. I any completely other, agree. Yeah. Any, any other <laughs> words that shouldn't appear on a CV? I mean, are people still saying I love writing? their hobbies mm -hmm. um but I how think genuine everyone, are they exactly <laughs> everyone knows that those are there for show more yeah. than anything else i mean i've i've got in mind that i read mind management books right mm -hmm. which i to be fair i used to do um don't do it anymore but but that's it different because it's a conversation <clears throat> starter so yeah true. only include a hobby or an interest if it's something that you can have a conversation with or you want to be asked about so yeah like, i think true. if you've got like a skill like um karate black belt or something yeah yeah that's something that maybe the recruiter could gel with mm -hmm. you on um so i'd mention that but mm. the boring stuff like cycling and going to the gym going know. to the gym everyone does that don't they? yeah <laughs> that's just we so try. boring <clears throat> yeah, yeah um okay and switching agency so there's a lot of did you ever switch agencies or you stuck with the one I was at one as an agent and I moved to the other one as, as a recruiter. recruiter. Okay, so. fine. So it doesn't really count, but are you finding a trend of, <clears throat> you know, agents hopping, jump shipping from one to the other? And when does it tend to happen after like three months, six months? <clears throat> what, what, what are you seeing there? So first, first question. So I, we do not see it as much at the moment because everyone's doing well in mm -hmm. the market, right? There's, Agents that have been here over a year are probably earning over a hundred thousand pounds a year. Sorry, not a month. Um, at least, if they're not, then they're probably not doing too well. So, mm. given the current market climate, I think it's less common to see agents hopping around mm. uh, because they've got no reason to. If you're doing well, why take the risk? Yeah. Um, on the flip side, some agents do leave. So, some agents will join. Uh, it's more commonly at the larger companies mm. where. I think what you'll find is that agents will join. They'll realize that, you know, the they've probably got greener. like, mm. they've got 20, 30 people in, in the same team, right? And it's so difficult to work well together when you're all fighting for the same stock, the same buyers. Mm. So 
they realize that maybe, you know, even though they've got a big reputation in the market, it might be better for them to join a smaller slash medium yeah. sized agency. So um, within That's so funny because <laughs> when I was in my clubbing days yeah. in London, um, there used to be this place in um, Ealing called the Red Rooms okay. where we used to go after work yeah. on a Friday. Sounds like a fun place. And it was <laughs> awful. It was absolutely dreadful. Yeah. Like to the point where you just go straight after work. Like it doesn't mm. even deserve you to go home and shower and okay. change outfits or anything. <laughs> it was just an after work place. Yeah. And it was all, it was such a dive, but we used to have the best nights there. Yeah. Well, we used to say, <clears throat> my friend used to have this saying, better to be the best thing in the worst clubs yeah. than the worst thing in the best clubs. Yeah, yeah, it? exactly. So it's like, just because you're the best agent, mm. it might be better to be the best agent at the worst brokerage, or yeah. not worst brokerage, but you know, uh, not so no, well-known brokerage than the worst agent at the best known brokerages. So I'm a, I'm a big football fan. Um, I think it's similar for football players, you mm -hmm. know, some of them, do outstandingly well. Um, one that springs to mind is uh, Wilfred Zaha, who plays for Crystal Palace. He's just moved now, but he went to Manchester United and mm. found that he just wasn't as good a player as he was at Crystal it, Palace. Maybe intimidating. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't, you know, at Crystal Palace, it was at Manchester United, um, they had players at a similar level that he, uh, as he was. Mm. So um, he, he found it shine. more difficult to shine. Exactly. Mm. And that, again, as a footballer, will um, uh, hurt your confidence. Mm. And then from there, you'll see your, your level starts dropping slightly. So... Um, well, with that football... <clears throat> or you know as a player being put in midfield yeah. <clears throat> strike or whatever yeah maybe you're if you do jump ship there's no mm. point in jumping ship or switching agencies if you're just going to be let's say you're a palm specialist for mm -hmm. one brokerage <clears throat> yeah. no point in going to be the palm specialist in another brokerage yeah, true. go somewhere that recognizes actually you might be better off playing in this position yeah, rather yeah, true. Than yeah that's true um i would always saying that i, I don't know if i would recommend um, switching agents areas. switching areas because mm. they've built they've taken time to build their networks yeah. and their connections in that particular area mm. unless it really isn't working but you can go to another company mm. and be the palm agent or the palm specialist in mm. that company so um <clears throat> yeah if you've got a medium-sized company where you've got two or three of you and you yeah. can actually bounce off each other and work well together so mm. um yeah i think yeah going back to what you were saying about agents uh changing uh, companies i think it's more common within their first six months where mm. they realize that that's a danger zone then yeah, yeah they're running out of money and they need to change something mm. so we'll find that they've had very good training from the the bigger companies mm. and then they'll go after three to six months join a smaller company and mm. then you'll see them progress because then they become um like you said a, a bigger fish in a smaller yeah, pond yeah. right um which, but do you think yeah. that's do you think that's part partly the reason why companies aren't investing so much in training <clears throat> these new beginners because it's like well you know i don't want to invest too much in them they might leave in three to six months or there's a good chance they're going to leave in three to six months yeah i think i think the larger companies do have good training programs mm. i think the ones that may be less structured are the medium to small size companies. And I think, um, you know, they'll, they'll have a training program in place, but um, because of the reasons you just said, um, it takes a lot of time and investment to train up agents mm. uh, properly. Um, and I think for that reason, they are less reluctant to do it. So um, you will always get training, of course, any, anywhere you go, but it just depends on the standard of training, mm -hmm. I think. So uh, we find that the larger companies are pretty good at it. Um, and then the smaller ones, obviously, um, they'll do one-on-one -on -one training, but they'll teach what they need to know of, mm -hmm. the, uh, of the job. Okay. And what is the most sought after role? I'm assuming real estate agent. Second to that, what's the most sought after role? Um, <clears throat> managerial, I think. So another reason people leave... Uh, as a real estate agent mm. is because they are looking for a career progression. Okay. So is that still happening? Cause <clears throat> agents are making more money than their managers these days. True. No? Yeah. That yeah. Real estate agents, uh, 
the market's not going to be good forever. Um, mm. And I think we'll see what it does over the next couple of years. Mm. Um, but I think that, yeah, some agents prefer managerial positions over being a real estate agent. And I think that goes down to personality trait. I think mm. a very good They're, you know they're selfish they need they want to earn money for themselves mm. and they're doing well for themselves so they don't need anyone else whereas those that are maybe a bit more humble um like teamwork things like that mm. they have personality traits of a good manager mm. um so i think they look for managerial positions because it's not quite worked out for them um, as much mm. as they wanted it to and I mm. right now yeah um because if you have a choice to, you know, carry on being independent and closing your own mm. deals, why would you then stop doing your own deals and training other people? Even if you're getting an override or cut of their commission, mm. um, it's it's a lot of headache in management. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, I, I found that out myself in my <laughs> yeah. large, and then obviously it's running a business yeah. and managing people as well. It's, mm. it's difficult, but. Um, it's a completely different job. And I think it's, a, you know, I, I don't like managers doing deals. I, mm. I don't really. It's, it's a conflict of interest. <coughs> it is a conflict of interest. And then you interest. get to the stage where your agents mm. will think, well, hold on, are they keeping all the good leads yeah. to themselves? Are yeah. they, you know, so you, you, my advice would be to, if you're going to be a manager, mm. you've got to <coughs> do zero deals, close zero deals. Exactly. Yeah. And mm. I think, um, yeah, like you said, they'll keep the best leads for themselves, for yeah. example, because it's in their best interest to. I think if you're managing a team, you need to put your team's interests at Fast. heart. Mm. Um, mm. And I, yeah, I learned that back in the UK with, with my manager. You know, she, she would always, she would do deals, but um they were completely separate to my deals and anytime i needed her she was there so mm. um although i'd recommend against it you know sometimes it can help but mm. i think in in most cases it's better to manage a team um and concentrate on managing mm. a team and not doing deals at the same time yeah. so i've got a question i know what the answer is going to be why go to a recruiter or no would you recommend going to a recruiter or approaching a company direct <laughs> i know you're going to say via a recruiter but what are the pros and cons of each going direct to the company or um... yeah so as a recruitment agency we we have access to most of the market um i think signed on right now we we deal with over 50 different real estate companies mm -hmm. in the dubai real estate uh, market so um <clears throat> what we do is we like i said earlier obviously we match your personality and what you're looking for to the company and to the right you company. already know, so, know about the brands exactly and the, the yeah, culture yeah. which is really important mm -hmm. exactly yeah so obviously i was an agent myself i was a recruiter after that within real estate so i have a lot of connections in the market and i think um a lot of friends work for different companies as well so i know what each company is like um i've got very good relationships with the hiring managers mm -hmm. as well so off the back of it you know i i know what they're looking for in a candidate and i can make sure that we're sending them the right candidates mm -hmm. and our job is to match the candidates to the clients as well um another benefit i guess of using a recruitment agency is that uh, we know the interview processes so we can you best can prep prepare them. you mm. for the interview process to ensure mm. that you're getting the offers that you you want to be getting mm -hmm. um so i would always recommend uh speaking to a recruitment agency mm -hmm. and uh you, you don't want that problem of having seven offers because mm -hmm. obviously it is a candidate-led market right now um and you will more than likely get a job it is quite easy let you know let's be let's be real let's be honest it is easy to get a job in real estate but it's knowing which company is the best mm. fit for you that's the yeah. difficult part of it but i do think that um considering of course if i'm coming through a recruiter <clears throat> there's a cost to the agency attached to that <clears throat> so if i'm <clears throat> applying direct to the company <clears throat> i'm i feel like i'd have more chance of getting hired because <clears throat> there's no recruiter fee involved so how do you how do you <clears throat> advise against that? Yeah, so they I mean they're going to pay us either way, right? So mm. the, the the way that we work is they in most cases have a um, set amount they pay us every month. So mm. for them, retainer. yeah, exactly. Mm. So for them, it's no difference. Okay. Um, so yeah, as a candidate, you'll never have to pay anything, and and we'll give you. 
Um, again, I, I mentioned earlier, will give you everything you need to make the move over to Dubai as mm -hmm. smooth as possible. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of a fee, um, you know, like I said, the agency is going to pay us that anyway. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it makes a difference uh, to them whether they, you know, justify the fee because mm -hmm. they're already sold on it as a company and mm -hmm. they know the value that we add by having us there as a, mm -hmm. a recruitment agency. Okay. And then, okay, so we've got the CV out the way. Let's talk about preparing for the interview and the actual interview. So mm. what are your kind of howlers that you've heard about on an interview? Any tips or recommendations? Or how do you prep your candidates? The worst thing you can do on an interview, and I, I did a video on this uh, recently, is to be late. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, no. That's yeah. the, the biggest no-no. And I... Um, even on your first day as well, and uh, obviously we'll, we'll speak and speak about that an, another time. But um, the reason I bring that up, I had a candidate that I said to them the night before, I was like, are you all set for your first day tomorrow? Yes, I am. Don't be late. Whatever you do, get there 30 minutes early. Mm. It's better than being 10 minutes late. Um, they text, she texted me in the morning and said, oh no, you won't believe what, believe what I've done. I was like, what's happened? I didn't realize the traffic was yeah. you know, bad coming out of JBC to here. I'm going to be late. And I was like, oh no, it's like a big but mistake. At least so do a test run. Not, yeah. Don't do a test drive on a Saturday. Well, do a test <clears> run <throat> on at rush hour to they, see how long yeah. the journey is going to take. So weirdly enough, they So, yeah. um, yeah, so yeah, it didn't, didn't work okay, out. So but turn up. <clears throat> well, I have a saying, yeah. if you're not 10 minutes early, you're late. Yeah. So I turn up 20 minutes early. Yep. Well, 15 minutes, I think is 15 enough. minutes is perfect. Get to, yeah. You know, be in the building, gather your thoughts and, yeah. you know, plan what you're going to say, but turn up <clears throat> into the office 15 minutes before. Completely agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 15 minutes is what we, th yeah. 15 to 30 mm -hmm. maximum. Don't be too early because. Yeah. It might look over eager. Yeah, it mm -hmm. looks over eager, but it just it annoys people, right? Yeah. If they're in a meeting or they're having lunch, like mm -hmm. they don't want to rush themselves. Yeah. Like they have a time booked in for a reason. So mm -hmm. 15 minutes, I think is a good, uh, a good, good time. Good time yeah, right. for sure. So men, yeah. suit and tie. <clears throat> Yeah, or yeah. Sh shirt, no tie. Suit and tie, neutral colours. So mm -hmm. I, I had someone turn up to an interview in like a bright blue suit and a bright red tie, right? Mm -hmm. I, for me, that's not very professional. I, mm -hmm. I think... If you're going to um, speak to a, a, a company or interview at a company, make sure you're wearing um, neutral like neutral colors. colors. Yeah. You, you don't want to stand out that much. Mm -hmm. guy that or, or girl that you know didn't wear the right thing mm -hmm. so yeah i think neutral colors professional attire yeah. definitely you can, it's better to overdress than underdress yeah. and i'll say girls heels not just for appearance, but for confidence. Yeah. It gives you heels. Maybe not open toes, because some people actually have a have a thing. They don't want to see your foot. So yeah, I yeah. would <clears throat> kind of keep it covered shoes yeah. until you get to know the lay of the land and, yeah. and see what the culture is or dress code is. Yeah, keep it professional, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I think girl I, I like girls that wear blazers. I think it looks mm -hmm. professional as well. Uh, I'm not just saying that because you've got yeah. a, a jacket on today, but mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think blazers are nice for, for girls. I mm. think it's professional as well. So hair up or hair um, down? Da I think hair up looks more like you're ready for business and you know ready to. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I'm not I a think guy. If there, but, was a, but, <laughs> if, if there was a study on this, it would <clears throat> yeah. say your chances are better with your hair up. But yeah, I don't know if anyone. I don't put know it in the I've never. Yeah, <laughs> I've never <laughs> thought about yeah. it. Yeah.